Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Ajaytha Shah, and I'm the founder, co-CEO of Frontier Markets. I'm excited to share more about our mission to empower rural households in India. But in order to understand the journey and also why this ma work matters to me so much, we have to take a little step back to the 1980s. So this is me in New York. Um, I grew up in the US in the early 1980s because my parents moved from Rajasthan uh, with their Jaipur Jain jewelry community that I refer to as J-cubed to pursue a life of prosperity and grow their family business. So I was the first US-born child in the family, which meant that I balanced a very interesting dynamic between two very different cultures. So my American culture taught me to think outside of the box, to diversify, to explore, to think big and dream big to do big things, to understand what it's like to be a global citizen. My Indian culture taught me, well, the opposite, said, refrain yourself from discovering. Retain your Indian identity. You're a girl, so act like one. Only have one dream, and that dream is to find a good Indian boy to marry and become a homemaker. So naturally, you can think that this was a bit of a conflict because I wanted to have it all. I wanted to study abroad. I wanted to become that national debate champion. I wanted to learn about peace negotiations in The Hague. And so I had to really adapt with skills of negotiation. And my first most important negotiation of life was really right after college. I asked my parents to give me the opportunity to explore India, learning about microfinance for a year through a fellowship. And in exchange, I would eventually return to New York, join law school, and of course, find that Indian boy to get married to in an arranged marriage. So they agreed. So I packed my bags, and at the age of 21, I left for India, and I discovered microfinance. And it really opened my eyes. One year became five years of village hopping, living, and really learning about the true struggles that rural households face, the realities and the pains and the stereotypes, especially for rural women. See, rural women in India, very similar to me, were also told that they only can get married. And they were also told that their only goal in life is to be a homemaker. The difference is that they were told this at the age of 14, and that's when they got married. The difference is that at the age of 30, they already had five kids. And when I connected with them over and over and over again, you know, they would say to me, had I had the education, had I had the opportunity, had I had the ability to explore, I think things would have been different. And that's when I got angry. Why is it that this is our destiny? Why is it that society treats us this way? Who decides? that daughters are not as valuable as sons. It's clearly not based on our capability, right? And that's when I had my aha moment. I understand these women's realities. I understand their pains. But unlike them, I have the ability to negotiate my journey. Unlike them, I have education. I have opportunity. And so isn't it my responsibility to harness this and do something that is not expected of this Indian girl. So I went back to New York, and I explained to my parents my vision, my passion, and what I believed was my future, my destiny. And to which you can imagine they responded, are you nuts? Now, I then agreed for one last negotiation. I said, how about this? How about you find me a nice Indian boy to marry in exchange for me to go to India to pursue my dreams? And so they agreed. And thus, Frontier Markets was born. Based in Rajasthan, India, Frontier Markets focuses on establishing a platform to help address the life challenges that rural households face. We started with clean energy because we believe that is the center of their life. In order to deliver services to these rural households, we built a network of rock star entrepreneurs, men and women, 
who we believe are the center to not only distribute these products and services, but also help them in understanding the value and provide after sales service. These are entrepreneurs that are locally from these rural villages that are earning income and now supporting their families. Using what I call a customer-centric model, we have learned that the best way to address the rural village is by supporting three distinct channels. The first being the agri-rural retailer, the second being women entrepreneurs, and the third being institutional partners. Frontier Market supports these three pillars with a market-based approach. We do on-the-ground market mapping, we collect customer insights, we try to understand which product for which household at what time with what value, and we also support them with marketing campaigns and training and after-sales service. And because of the rural population and the way that we serve this, we're actually now addressing almost 80% of that rural village population, truly focused on the last mile. Core to our work for Frontier Markets is the Solar Sahili program. You know, if I learned anything at my time in microfinance, I learned that when you give the right enabling environment to women, they are highly entrepreneurial. And really the challenges that they face is that they don't have those skills or those financial access which becomes a detriment to themselves, but also their families and their communities. Our solar sahilis are not just sales agents. They're market makers, they're service providers, and they're change makers. They actually are reaching some of the hardest to reach communities in rural India. And what they're doing is they're not just conducting marketing campaigns, they're actually helping households change behavior. They're helping us understand the insights that we need to tr truly build a relationship for trust. But after they sell the product, they're also involved in the installation and the after sales service, really building that community of trust and allowing frontier markets to understand that rural household more effectively. And therefore, they're earning multiple income streams, not just by the products that they sell, but also by the service that they um, provide to the community. And this is really the first time that they're earning income. To be clear, these women have not been a part of that economic value system. So when they're earning income for the first time, our Sahilis are investing this money in their bank accounts and they're using it for their children's education or maintaining stability for their families. Through the insights that we've gathered from our Sahilis, we've also learned a lot about our rural consumers. We understand what they want, when they want it, and how they want it. This has given us the opportunity to now design products that are created by them, for them, and manufactured in India. This has also allowed us to leverage our rural distribution platform to bring in other product innovations with other product partners. So we've moved beyond just lighting and energy and now actually focusing on internet connectivity, mobile phones, and actually really looking at this as a unique opportunity to partner with corporate partners at a larger scale. Over the last six years, we've also understood to truly serve this value chain, you need a series of very different kinds of expertise. We have a team that's really focused on product development, on operations, on understanding how to partner with NGOs to scale the Sahili program, to even leveraging market insights at scale. The team has a combination of over 100 years of experience. And finally, our impact. So as you've heard, we've reached over 363,000 households, selling them over 400,000 solutions of clean energy products in rural Rajasthan through a network of 3,000 entrepreneurs, one third of which are women. So all sounds awesome, right? I mean, left for India, built a dream, started a company, created impact, great. Well, Behind these big, beautiful impact numbers are also a lot of lessons. You know, being a social entrepreneur is like being on a roller coaster ride. You know, there's ups and downs, highs and lows, but also just when you think you've seen it all, something else comes and surprises you. When Acumen coined the phrase patient capital, they really weren't kidding. You know, working in rural India brings unknown disasters, whether it's floods that wipe out series of crops of your farmers for the entire year, or whether that flood prevents you from even reaching your customer that you need to serve. Being an entrepreneur takes a lot of time because there's a lot of hurdles that this market offers. And personally, when things got the hardest, whether it was a divorce, whether it was a co-founder stepping away, 
a car accident, the Indian government suddenly deciding that the economy will now be cashless and uh, scare all of our rural farmers. Um, staying grounded and staying calm really built a strength and a resilience that actually helped us move forward. And why? Well, because above all of this, we have a really important responsibility to the community that we're serving. Suddenly, these millions of households are depending on us to solve their challenges. So when you have a challenge that comes your way, you can't just walk away and say, all right, let's close shop. This didn't work out. I don't sleep at night for those reasons. And so obviously, we survived. And we survived mainly because of the people in the community. My biggest lesson has been that partnerships at the right time are the strength to really move forward. And the key has been finding those right partners, right investors, right ecosystem enablers, right colleagues at the right time to really help you solve your challenges across that journey. But also, most importantly for me, it's about recognizing when you have that challenge, recognizing that you're not going to be the key to solving everything, and also being humble enough to ask for that help at that right time. So where do we go from here? Well, we're doubling down. We're doubling down on technology, on partners, on products, and of course, our team. And we're also investing in our women entrepreneurs. We want to directly invest in them to create wealth opportunities at scale so they can actually become the center of their communities at a much deeper level. And to do this, with this combination, we'd be ready to scale to grow our work and reach that next level through a combination of blended capital, equity, debt, and grants, which really allows us to innovate and harness on our learnings to take that scale to that next level. There we go. So I'm incredibly excited about this future. Um, I really am super appreciative of the community and the work and the lessons that come along this way. And every time I feel like I'm getting back on that roller coaster, I stop and I think about the women that we've been working with. These rock star women who come in with fire in their eyes, passion in their heart, and this vision to change the world. These are women that did not have a voice and now have that power and that tool for negotiations. They have the ability to demand things in meetings. They actually are innovating with us. They're asking us to bring in mobile solutions, internet connectivity, financial products, not because it's nice to have. It's because they believe they have a right to have it. And every time I think about this, I wanted to always share one story that's always inspired me. And this is what I'll leave you with. This is a story of Kamlesh, who is one of our solar Sahelis. So Kamlesh is from a district called Dholpur, which is one of the poorest districts in Rajasthan. And uh, she is 29 and a mother of four, do the math, she's very young. And uh, when she joined us uh, about two years ago as a solar Sahili, she's been massively successful, entrepreneurial. She's helped 300 households get access to solar solutions. She's even become an internet sakhi that helps people understand how to use a mobile phone and recognizes Google better in ways that we don't even understand. So naturally, when uh, we had an opportunity to meet the Chief Minister of Rajasthan. I wanted to invite her to Jaipur to have the opportunity to meet the women that controls the state. And she was brilliant. You know, she met the Chief Minister, she talked about her village, she talked about her electricity challenges, she even challenged the Chief Minister to understand her business model and plan to scale a program like Frontier Markets in the state of Rajasthan because she felt the impact needs to go beyond her. Just brilliant. But then after that, she started crying. And I didn't quite understand why. And so I asked her, and she said, Didi, what do you want me to say to you? Look at what I'm here doing, and look at what these people are saying about me in these villages. So it turns out, when Kamlesh was leaving for Dholpur, her brother-in-law decided to spread a rumor that she was going to Jaipur for prostitution. So she took this photo. <laughs> We got it framed, and she went back into her village, and she showed that to her father-in-law. Her father-in-law wept, grabbed her hand, took her straight into the village to meet all the village heads, raised her hand high, and said, this is my daughter-in-law. 
She's achieving things that you cannot even possibly dream of achieving. She is the future. And at that moment, Gamlesh looked at her father-in-law and said, Bauji, I have one request. And he said, sure, beta, what would you like? And she said, give me the chance to decide when my daughter gets married. I've saved up money. I want to invest in her education. And I want, her to give, I want to give her the opportunity to earn income and grow. And just like that, Gamlesh was the reason of preventing her daughter from having a child marriage. And just like that, Gamlesh became the story that everyone recites to empower themselves to prevent their daughters from having child marriages. So if it's not for people like Gamlesh or the other Sahelis that we work with, why else would we do what we do? Thank you. <laughs>